You know, last Christmas I did an audio tools course that's got a lot of traction here on my channel and it covered five important tools for mixing dialogue for video. But I intentionally left one very common tool out and that's a multi-band compressor. Coming up. Thank you so much for tuning into a video of mine. My name is Oliver and on this channel I talk about audio for video as well as filmmaking and composing and all things creative. So if those things interest you at all, please come subscribe to the channel. We're growing a lot in 2018. It's going to be the year of exponential growth for this channel and for the audio gospel in general. So back last Christmas, I did do that audio tools course where I covered those five important tools and it was compressors, EQs, DSers, noise gates, and limiters. And those were the five main tools that I wanted to cover in that course. And again, that course was geared towards dialogue mixing specifically, but you know, those tools apply to anything. They're used in music, they're used in mastering, they're used in everything. Anything audio, those tools are there for that use. But I did leave out one strategic tool that is talked about a lot that I didn't mention, the multi-band compressor. What is it, how would you use it, and why would you use it? So do you remember all those crude drawings that I did last Christmas where I drew that water over time and thresholds and ratios and all that stuff, talking about how, how the tools manipulate the sound and all that kind of stuff. Well, I'm not gonna do that again because here's what a multipressor is. It is a compressor that acts on specific designated frequencies. Now, if you remember last, if you remember the tools from last audio course, the DSer does exactly that, but the multipressor does it across the whole spectrum. It's actually a really exciting tool. I don't tend to use it that often because I really want to dial in my amplitude, then I like to dial in the EQ and move on. What it's really doing on a broad scale is combining compression and EQ into one amazing tool. So typically a multi-band compressor has between three and four bands that it can press on. And a band is a selection of frequencies. So if it's a four band multi-channel compressor, what it's going to do is have a bass channel that is a compressor, a uh, mids channel that's a compressor, a treble channel, and a high channel. And basically just covering the entire audio spectrum, the entire EQ spectrum, and there's four separate compressors in there. So what does that look like for you functionally? Remember how we learned how to use a compressor? You set the threshold to when it turns on, you set the ratio to how much it pulls that signal back, you hit, set the knee, you set the attack, you set the release, you set the makeup game. All of that is the amplitude of the audio being affected by the compression. Well, now you get to do it three or four times depending on how many bands your multi-band compressor has, you get to set those levels on each different select set. So you could, if you, if you got a muddy mix, you could actually compress everything at a designated threshold and act like a real regular old compressor, but then compress even more on your low mids. And you can designate how wide the cue is on those low mids in the multi-band compressor. That can become incredibly valuable if you're low on time. And if you just need to get something done quick and dirty, you've got your compressor working, you got your EQ working, in one tool. It's like shampoo and conditioner in the same bottle. Shampoo's critical, you gotta clean the hair, but you know what? You always wanna use that conditioner afterwards, right? You wanna get that hair to have the nice shine and look like mine. But sometimes you don't have a lot of time, so you wanna put the shampoo and the conditioner in the same bottle, it's a two in one, just <laughs> squirt it out and you are good to go. And that's exactly what a multi-band compressor is and does in every single way. You're welcome for that metaphor. So here's some, here's just a couple really quick examples using the multiband compressor in Premiere Pro. Those four actually are happening on Thursday, and I'm filming the actual awards so, show, so that should be uh, that should take up most of my time. But I do want to do a, an in-depth review with this mic um, and the cloud lifter when it gets here from Sweetwater. So anyway, just excited for that. Really pumped. Mm -hmm. Some Roberto style. I don't know if you're a fan of the H3 podcast and they use SM7 beats. I don't know if you're a fan of Sarah DC and her new podcast called The Creative Exchange. They use SM7 beats. SM7 beats are the mic. They are the mic for this specific application. So I'm excited to get the cloud lifter, see how that messes with the signal. Um, and again, this signal you're listening to right now is... So what I've done is I've compressed more on the uh, low-mid band. I've compressed pretty much standard on the high frequencies or the intelligibility frequencies. Um, it looks aggressive down here in the lows, but I'm just barely seeing some attenuation. I'm barely seeing attenuation up here. 
for the lows right there. And then the highs is the same thing. I just want a little bit of attenuation. We don't need to really smash those. And here is a little bit before and after. The only thing I've done is normalized it, AKA I've boosted the signals just so it's uh, audible, but I've done no compression, no uh, limiting, no EQ, no nothing to this mic. I don't know if you're a fan of Sarah Dietschy and her new podcast called The Creative Exchange. They use SM7Bs. SM7Bs are the mic. They are the mic for this specific application. So, so really that's sucking a lot of audio amplitude out of these low mids, cleaning up some of the muddiest muddiness while compressing the whole EQ frequency. So back to the main video. So that's it. It's a compressor and an EQ. Simple enough. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, give me a like. Okay, if you've made it this far in the video, you are a true champion to me. I want to do a little experiment with my subscribers here. I want you, you watching right now, you, yes you, I want you to stop what you're doing, comment on this video, tell me where you're from and how long you've been doing video stuff. I want to get to know each and every one of you. If you're on mobile, take the time after the video is done to write that in, but I'm talking to you right now, you right there. And you, if you're not subscribed yet, hit subscribe so that we can become part of the same family. <laughs> okay, that's all for this week. Quick little fun video on the multi-band compressor. And next week, I'm going to be doing a review on this guy, the Shure SM7B. I've got it right here, and now you're hearing it. You've been listening to the Rode NTG3 the whole time, this video, and now we've got the Shure SM7B. One is made by Rode, one is made by Shure. One is a condenser mic, one is a dynamic mic, one's a shotgun mic with a shotgun polar pattern. This one has a cardioid polar pattern. They're different in many, many ways, but you know what? They're very similar too. I love microphones. I always have loved microphones, and so I'm gonna do a mic shootout next week, which is gonna be a blast. So I think that's all the housekeeping for this week, and I will see you next week. Yeah.